But do you understand? Yes, yes laugh. All, I a, laugh when people are no, being ridiculous. Why do you think that's the, so the funny? The implication because is that... you're always putting your nails in my face and shutting me up, and I'm the, over Because it. you're okay. boring, but and the, you lie. I'm not lying, lying about it. You, you know. lied, and you were on your kids, and you lied. That is bullshit. How? No, listen. Oh, you're so evil. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 18, Episode 17, unfinished business. Now, first and foremost, it seems like a lot of viewers basically lost their sympathy for Shannon that they've had all season long, and it's all due to her interaction with Katie's husband, Matt. Because once Shannon stormed off once again, what she does best, she was expressing how in the past she would walk off, say she was done, and then come right back. But now when she says that she's done, she really means it. And he was basically validating her feelings, and he was like, you know, Maybe it's time to just walk away because, you know, you've been nothing but nice to me. I care about you. And of course, Shannon immediately gets all defensive, just goes in on him for like no damn reason. Like, girl, he's validating your feelings, your behavior. Like, what the hell? And mind you, in real time, Shannon's expressing like, oh, Alan's going to return next season, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, look, Shannon, you have nothing else going on. You have no other streams of income. Like, you really need this damn show. Like, your kids are all in college right now. If they offer you a fucking contract, you know damn well you're gonna fucking take it. And the thing is, if she comes back next season, she's not gonna have as rough as a time as she had this season. This season was pretty rough for Shannon, but she bared through it, and it's like... If there was ever a time to not return, it would have been this season, no? Like, I feel like it just doesn't make sense to go through this season, what you went through, and then all of a sudden be like, I don't ever want to return. When we know damn well you are going to take the contract, Shannon. Like, you basically have no choice. You have no other things going on. You're always expressing how you, like, have these financial difficulties. Like, you're going to take the contract, girl. But her going off on Matt like that for justifying her feelings and just being like, yeah, you know, if it's if you're having a hard time, maybe just walk away. People online are like, you know, Shannon, this just validates what people are saying. You have a problem, blah, blah, blah. So I haven't really lost that sympathy for Shannon yet. It's just kind of like, girl, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm already getting annoyed with her and all her constant running off. Like if shit gets hot in the kitchen, she immediately runs off to the restroom for a little bit. And it's like... Shannon, you have to, like, stand in your shit, and, you know, so I don't know. Kind of annoyed with Shannon. I haven't lost that, like, sympathy for her, because, you know, I do think she had a really rough season, but, I mean, she just showed her ass. I used to say all the time, I'm done, and then I'd come back. When I say I'm done now, I mean it. I'm done. And maybe it's time to walk away. Because I care about you and you've been kind but to see, me. That, that, that angers me that you said that because you don't know me at all. And I'm, I am probably the strongest person here in this group. Well, why are you here with me right now? Because you're every... You're telling me that you're melting like, are down. Are you trying to argue with me right now? Because you every... just tried to argue with me. You're the one here. I'm standing here by myself. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Goodbye. Yo. Are you kidding me right now? And the shit regarding Ryan, Jen's fiance, the thing is this. So Shohei Otani, a professional baseball star, his interpreter was basically fucking with his money. And he wound up wiring like $16 million into Ryan's account. And this is definitely shady, like without a doubt. But the thing is, Tamara being like, oh, I was right about him. I was right all along. When are you guys gonna start listening to me? Blah, blah, blah. By the end of the episode, production was like, hey, Ryan wasn't accused of anything, he wasn't charged with anything, and he got immunity. But the thing is, why would he need immunity if he wasn't accused of anything? But basically, he isn't, like, under investigation anymore. It was, like, this larger investigation regarding Shohei Otani. But according to production, he isn't being charged or accused of anything. It's basically this money landed in his account. Now, is it a red flag? You bet your fucking ass it is. But I mean, does it mean that Tamara was like right this whole time? I'm kind of hesitant to say that, you know what I mean? It's like, were you really right? I mean like, and Emily's over here like, oh, he could go to jail. The producer is saying he hasn't been charged or accused of anything. How the fuck can he go to jail? Like, 
it's a lot of just jumping to conclusions, essentially. I'm not giving Tamara the satisfaction of, like, believing that she was right this whole time, because, like, he, production says he isn't accused of anything, so, I mean, you know? But anyways, the episode picks up with Emily and Gina meeting up to go axe throwing. And I tried that out earlier this year for the first time, and I was so bad at it. It was so hard. Like, it thought it'd be so easy, but I was just really bad at it. My friend beat me, like, it was like 30 to like 4. It was like an old games we were playing. It was so bad. But anyways, Emily expresses that she feels kind of bad about how Shannon stormed off from London. She like took a separate flight home and everything. So she's just like, I feel bad for her. And I think that all this fighting between her and Tamara is just too much. But the thing is, in London, Emily was telling Tamara, oh, just keep being the bigger person. Just keep being the bigger person. On what planet is Tamara being the bigger person? Like, okay, Emily, you feel bad about it, but you're like, lifting Tamara up and shit. Like, oh my goodness. And regarding the whole fake news drama that impacted Gina about how Travis's ex went through publications, alleging that Gina pushed him down the stairs, all that shit. She says that both Shannon and Tamara are at fault. But the difference is that Shannon is capable of showing that she's growing and working on herself, whereas Tamara just cannot do so. And we also see that Gina and Shannon met up for a one-on-one -on -one the day prior. And Shannon was like, oh my gosh, Gina, if I had remembered what transpired, I would have owned up to it. Oh my goodness. What do you mean? This happened last year before the reunion. This wasn't like, three and a half years, five years ago. This is pretty fucking recent. So I don't believe it. I think that Shannon was hoping that this wouldn't get blown out of the water. It was, and I was trying to cover her ass and shit. It's like, oh, if I had to remember what transpired, girl, get the fuck out of here. But anyways, Jen then rolls in and she shares that Ryan proposed to her in the Bahamas. She has this big old rock on her finger. Shannon rolls in right afterward. And we see Shannon, Emily, and Gina react to the engagement news. So Shannon says that Ryan is really proving everyone wrong. He stepped up to the plate and just doing a good job. Emily has some similar sentiments. She says that she had some doubts about Ryan. And while she thinks there have been some red flags, she appreciates that he stepped up to the plate and taking care of Jen and her kids. And of course, Gina's like, couldn't he have just used that money to pay her rent instead? It's like, if Jen gets anything nice or treats herself at all, they're just gonna bring that up. Like, oh my goodness. But anyways, Jen then shares that she's gonna have an engagement party. Well, actually, I think Katie and Alexa are throwing it. The theme's gonna be tacky bridesmaids, dresses, all that shit. She notes that, and she also says that Tamara reached out to have a one-on-one -on -one with her. And apparently, Tamara wanted to show Jen evidence that Shannon is the real shitster. Shannon's involved as well. And the thing is with Tamara that she's acting as though she and Jen never had any issues before London. It's like, Shannon is not the root of your issue. Like, get the fuck out of here. And Jen says that she isn't really ready to meet up with Tamara like this, though she is still gonna invite her to her party. We then see Tamara and Alexis meet up, and Tamara tells her about the London trip, all that jazz. And while they were there, Alexis went ring shopping with John Jansen. And she thinks that she could have a proposal coming along pretty soon. Of course, Tamara's saying that Shannon ruined her friendship with Jen. As if she didn't throw a napkin in her face last season, had all this bullshit with her, as if she didn't go in on her and Ryan at Katie's house. No, it's all because of Shannon in London. It's her fault that Jen and I are at odds now. Which is just fundamentally not true. And Alexis says that Shannon likes to create her own narratives, just like she does with John Jansen. It's like, oh my goodness, of course. And the scene ends with Tamara expressing that she has proof that Shannon's the one who spearheaded the Inquisition into Ryan. And later on, when she tries pleading this case to Jen, she's like, Shannon can be all over that text thread. Like, the difference is that when Shannon apologizes, I believe that she's sincere whereas I cannot say the same about Tamara. So it's a lot deeper than just, oh, she's the one who started it. Like, no, it goes into your eyes as individual characters and Jen is just over Tamara's bullshit. We then get a little quick rapid fire check-in with Tamara, Heather, Jen, and Katie's kids. 
So Jen notes that she and her son are a lot better now after the conversation earlier this season. He's thinking about just getting his GED and going to the Marines rather than like finishing high school and going to college. Like he's just not really into school and whatnot. So he's really proud of him. And Heather checks in with her son, Nikki, and he's like, you know, I didn't really want to go to college, but I'm having fun while I'm here. And the whole thing is he's just another one of those rich kids who's like, you don't need college. I don't need to go to college. Well, no, because you have fucking nepotism. You have your parents' connections to help you out and shit. Like, I had a similar reaction with Lisa Barlow's son, Jack Barlow. He was like, you don't even need college. Like, well, no, because you have your parents to lean on and all that shit. Like, I don't know. I think it's so fucking funny. It's the rich-ass kids. It's always, like, the boys, too. They're like, I just want to just start working right away. It's like, well, yeah, and you can do so because of your parents and their hard work. I guess Nikki, he has real estate license. He broke a record for like selling like the biggest home sale in Long Beach history or whatever. It's because your connections because of Heather Dubrow and Terry Dubrow. Because mommy and daddy, like it's not because of you and your own hard work. It's because of your parents' connections. Like, come on, dude. So yeah, we see that. Tamara's daughter, Sophia, is really interested in getting to music and whatnot. She was going to community college and wants to get to like the, a music producing kind of thing. So. She's doing that, following her passion. And with Katie, her daughter gets her um, her official name changed. Now she's Kylie Janella. She had her father's last name before. Now she has like her stepdad's last name. So just a little check into the kids and whatnot. We then head over to Gina's and she catches up with Travis. And she reiterates that she doesn't want to keep living apart. But that's what's best for them. She notes that she would want nothing more than to like have Travis be by her side forever, but she notes that it's been years of this toxic ass drama with his ex and like, apparently the divorce isn't even finalized yet. So he, like his estranged wife, I should say, but like there's all this drama with her and Gina's just like, I had to just get away from that. I cannot have this chaos in my home. And it's odd because earlier this season, Gina was kind of framing it as though like, oh, I'm doing so much better financially. I want to like treat my kids more. But the reality is no, it's like you're dealing with this toxic ass dynamic. Like, why don't you just say that in the first place? And Travis is like, you know, I'm still by your side. I'm still here for you, but I don't like this setup. I don't like this arrangement. I'm not happy about it. And he adds that when adversity hits, they should be pulling together rather than pulling away. He also expresses that Gina likes to self-sabotage when things are going well. So he's just really expressing how he feels about the whole situation. Though Gina is still like, I think we made the right decision. Like, I stand by it. It's not ideal for the long term, but I'm with it. She also notes that it's just a really big test for her and Travis. Like, if they're meant to be, they'll get through it. Though she also wants to go to therapy and try to, like, work on this whole situation. So we're gonna do that, I guess. And it's now time for Jen's engagement party. And on the way there, Shannon is like lying down in the backseat of the car to not get wrinkles. And I was like, that's kind of relatable. Cause like there've been times where like I'll wear a nice shirt or something and I like leave it hanging up in the backseat and I'll like put it on when I get there. Cause I don't want those wrinkles from like sitting in it, all that jazz. So I, I understand where Shannon's coming from to be honest. Uh, Vicky's gonna be attending, as well as Joe De La Rosa, another OG, so it's a little blast from the past, if you will. And upon arriving, Heather clocks that neither Katie nor her husband greeted her. Even though she and Katie had a little bit of banter or whatnot, but like, they didn't say hi to her. So she feels kind of snubbed by them, though Katie thinks that Heather's the one who snubbed them. So again, just like a, they both think that the other person's being rude to them, so that's kind of odd. But I mean, Katie is the hostess. I think that does fall on Katie to like greet Heather. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But yeah, so things are kind of weird right from jump. Tamara also notes that Vicky didn't greet her. So some more weird vibes going on. And when Jen and Ryan arrive, we learn that Joe used to work for Ryan way back in the day. So again, just a little, this little like information and whatnot that like we wouldn't have really known beforehand. And off to the side, Tamara tells Gina that she's giving up drinking because she doesn't like how she acts while doing so. So it's like, okay, Tamara. And apparently at the reunion, she notes that she's going to therapy. She also caused a stir online by saying that, oh, I went to therapy and they said that I have autism. 
basically trying to, like, people felt like she was just trying to, like, excuse her shitty behavior from the past, but she's saying she isn't gonna drink anymore, so, you know, good for Tamara, I guess. Let's see if she actually pulls through with it. And Gina reiterates that both she and Jen were made collateral damage in Tamara's bullshit with Shannon. And Tamara ends up giving her an apology, so, you know, good for her, I guess. But again, Tamara's apologies are just so surface level and meaningless at this point. It's just like, okay, girl, whatever. And during this interaction, Jen and Shannon both say that they're both just over Tamara's crap. They're just done with her at this point. And Emily, Heather, and Katie then have a conversation about the whole babysitting drama. So remember, Katie's daughter, Kylie, babysat Emily's nine-year-old twins. And according to Kylie, the twins were like, oh, we don't like Heather. She's mean and bossy to our mommy. But the twins are saying, no, Katie's the one who mentioned Heather. And they were like, basically repeating what she was saying. So there's a whole disconnect. And after Emily expresses this, that, you know, my twins didn't say that, they're just repeating what they heard. Katie's like, well, Kylie said otherwise, so I'll have to address it with her. Because if she's lying, we need to get to the bottom of it. And Emily's like, I'm not saying that she's lying. But my issue is that this was brought to the group. And it's like, well, Emily, you kind of are saying that Kylie's lying. And to be honest, like, I believe that Emily was venting to Shane about Heather and her twins overheard it. Because that shit fucking happened. And Emily's like, you're implying that I'm a bad mother. It's like, you're not a bad mom. For, for what? Your kid's overhearing you talking shit about someone who you don't really like? Or that you used to not like? I mean... I don't think that makes you a bad mother, you know what I mean? But like, like, who the fuck is Heather to your twins? You're not like bashing their grandma or their dad. Like, who the fuck is Heather to them? So, you know, I think Emily's just throwing it way out of proportion. And Katie says, I didn't tell the group. Kylie's the one who told Tamara and Tamara's the one who brought it to the group. That is what happened. And she also adds that this whole thing is just like, not that serious. And she's like, you know, it was just like a mother-daughter moment. We're just giggling about it. And this pisses Heather off because she's like, you were giggling about me being mean? And Katie's like, yeah, we were. <laughs> it's like, Heather is so upset over the prospect, over some kids not liking her. It's like, who gives a fuck? Like, who actually cares about that? And Heather tries checking Katie, but Katie just straight up doesn't give a fuck. And after Heather calls her a liar, Katie's like, I didn't lie, you lied. You swore on your kids and you lied. And this really pisses Heather off. Okay. You're boring but and they, you lied. I'm not lying about it. You lied and you swore on your kids and you lied. That is bullshit. How? No, listen. Oh, you're so mean. You know, I know, I know, so I know. I know. Bad I know. I know. And Emily, who has been struggling to get a single word in this entire interaction, she then expresses her perspective. Like, Katie, do you understand how that makes me look like a bad mom or makes you look like a bad friend to Heather? And Katie's like, yes, I understand that. Next time I'll come to you directly, blah, blah, blah. So they kind of squash it. She apologizes to Emily. But Heather is still seething with rage for Katie. She's just done with Katie's bullshit, to be honest. And Tamara then approaches Jen and she basically tries pleading her case about how I wasn't the only one at fault. Shannon's the one who initiated it. Shannon texted me asking me to look into Ryan, so I did. And Jen's like, look, I'm not into this. She basically shuts the conversation down and she expresses, you know, Shannon could be all over that text thread, but she's more genuine than Tamara ever will be. And Tamara's acting all demure, trying to keep the peace and shit. And it's like, no, Jen sees right through it. She thinks that Tamara isn't a friend and has a lot of work to do on herself. And on the side, Vicky says that she isn't gonna chase Tamara and she calls her classless and notes that she has an ego larger than the entire state of California, which is pretty damn big. The girls then all meet up and take a group picture. And while doing so, Gina's like, wow, I'm surprised that you guys haven't spoken at all, speaking to Tamara and Shannon. And I'm like, Gina, why would you do this? She's like, oh my gosh, you guys are like in the same party and like you haven't even talked to each other. Like, oh my gosh. And this pisses Shannon off. Like Tamara doesn't even say a single word to Shannon and she just winds up storming off. And it's like, 
What the hell? Like, what the fuck just happened? And at this point, right after storming off, Shan has a conversation with Katie's husband, Matt. And she becomes furious when he suggests that maybe it's time for Shan to just walk away. She even runs to Katie and she's like, oh my gosh, what your husband just said to me was so inappropriate. It was so inappropriate. As if he said so, like, how is that inappropriate? Like, she's just so weird. And as Shannon's doing so, we see John Jansen roll up. He doesn't actually go into the party, it seems. He just seems to like roll up to pick up Alexis. And Shannon tries taking the high ground as Emily and Gina are all messy, like looking over the fucking fence, seeing what's up. Gina literally has her whole ass out trying to like look over the fence. It's quite a spectacle. <laughs> Not me, not oh my god, oh my god. We're not involved, we're not involved, we're not involved. Oh, we we're not involved. We're just standing here by ourselves. John Jansen, Janet. I don't care. Can you see? I don't care. And the party then winds down. But three weeks later, the news breaks about Ryan allegedly being involved in the Shohei Otani gambling scandal. And in turn, Tamara says that she was right all along, and she meets up with Emily, Alexis, and Heather to debrief, and she whips out this FBI cap. And the general consensus is that Jen should not get married to Ryan, and that if she does so, she's an idiot. The whole, like, Jen's stupid, Jen's an idiot, no one's this dumb thing, it just keeps resurfacing. It's like, I don't think Jen's that dumb. Is she a little ditzy? Sure, I'll give it, but it's like, she's an idiot. She's stupid. No one's this dumb. It's like, damn, I don't think it's that serious, you know? We then see Katie meet up with Gina and Jen. And Gina tells Jen, girl, you're in an unhealthy relationship, given what's going on in here. And it's like, well, Gina, you could say the same thing about you and Travis. Like, you're all upset over his ex being all messy and shit. Like, you had to really separate your home. You don't think you're in an unhealthy relationship? Like, get the fuck out of here. And Jen explains her perspective. She's like, Ryan is like my best friend. I can talk to him about anything. I was married to a man for years who wouldn't have a conversation with me if I begged him. And now, you know, I'm so happy and in love and like this shit's happening. So she's just really grappling with what's going on. Jen feels like she literally fucked it up. And Gina says that Jen is putting herself in the line of fire right now. And she should only be worried about herself and her kids. Like, you can't take on this man's baggage, essentially. And Jen says that she literally fucked it all up. And in her confessional, Gina kind of breaks down how she thinks Jen is feeling. I think it is incredibly hard for Jen to come to terms with the fact that she blew up her life and left her husband and put her family through a lot for this man who isn't who he presented himself to be. However, at the very end of the episode, production lets us know that Ryan was never accused or charged of any wrongdoing and received full immunity. That's the production shares. So it's like Emily saying, oh, he could go to prison. Tara be like, oh, I was so right this whole time. It's like, it's shady as fuck. Don't get me wrong. But he wasn't like charged or accused of, of anything. Like, okay. And she and Ryan are slated to get married in 2025. So they seem to be all good, it seems. But anyways, that's it for this episode. Next up is the reunion. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. Bye.